Good morning, Metalheads Internet. Welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. Uh, I'm sure as you can already tell, things are very different this time around. Much like the best albums of 2018 video, there's no video, podcast setting, very loose, not a lot of editing. Also much like that video, it's Anna. Hi. Heart of Diana. How you doing? I'm okay. You're doing pretty good? Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. I'm having a good time. Uh, now, now uh, the main reason for this weird new setup and for special guests and all that fucking fun nonsense, we're not talking about an album. Oh no, we're talking about one of the most controversial movies in the world of heavy metal. And that would be the, the Lords of Chaos biopic about mayhem. Have you heard of that movie, Anna? Of course I have. Yeah. No, I haven't. Pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't just go see it. Yeah, no, we, sh we, we, wait, spoiler, fucking shit. <laughs> I didn't know it was supposed to keep that secret. I uh, know. Uh, for those of you somewhat unaware, Lords of Chaos is a biopic about the life and times of Mayhem, specifically Euronymous and our our favorite racist Nazi fucking asshole Varg Vakerns himself, about the rise of Norwegian black metal, about... Uh, Death is Silence for some records and eventually Mayhem's debut album and all the chaos that happened in between, what inspired it, what followed it, and um, I think it's safe to say that people are pretty mixed. I think we can start off safely by saying that. I don't really, I don't know, I haven't been paying attention to what people say. Like, I, don't, I still want to hear their shit. Smart. Like, whatever. <laughs> Honestly smart. But uh, uh, Decimal Magazine, who are, in my opinion, the foremost authorities on extreme music, said that this movie is fucking fantastic. Rolling Stone was a little less optimistic. Uh, the film currently holds a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 6.3 average. And that's on Metacritic... That's a passing grade, come on. Yeah, that, that's good. good. <laughs> that's and good. on Metacritic, it's got a 47 out of 100, indicating wow. mixed or average reviews. And then there's, of course, the reaction from the metal fan base, which, frankly, is the most important reaction. And uh, some of y'all are fucking going nuts. Some of y'all take your black metal way too fucking seriously. Oh, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's which is a pretty good summary for this whole movie, by the way. <laughs> like, uh, Yeah, I mean, ever I, I, remember, fun, I remember when I met you, Anna... We were talking about Lords of Chaos because this is this movie's been in the production for a while. Oh, have we? I don't even fucking yes. remember. Yes, I remember at the time you were kind of like, I don't know how I feel about that, and I can't believe you remember this. I don't. Remember I do. Shit. This was like date number two, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> Holy fucking shit! Yeah. I do remember this. I'm a fucking smart cookie. That's how. I don't remember fuck all. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> and you know. Holy shit! I remember. Were you embarrassed? Oh, no, I just don't remember anything. <laughs> Plot twist, the guy remembers shit. <laughs> Honestly, I can't remember anything. No, I mean, the, I'm just trying to make a point that this movie's been around for a while. It premiered at Sundance last year. If you want to be super specific, it's a year old. But it's only now gotten a wide release here in North America. Um, I want to make something clear right away, too, before we get into the movie. Um, because this is a movie review, I, I really don't care what you have to say about Mayhem or Black Metal as a whole. So... Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, I don't I don't want to sift through a thousand comments where it's like, you don't understand true Norwegian black metal. Blah, blah. Like, I, I don't fucking care, all right? Like, we're not here to talk about the music. We're not here to talk about the band. I mean, we are, but not in that capacity. We're here to talk about this movie and how it stands. And right off the bat, if uh, um, uh, I think I speak for both of us when I say that this movie is not nearly as bad as some of y'all are saying. It's, I would personally say, it's a pretty fucking good movie. Honestly, for what it is, it's pretty good. It could have been a lot fucking worse. A I, lot worse. I was kind of worried that it was going to be a total cringe fest. Not because of the trailer, mind you. But just because, you know, we don't really see biopics with such extreme content matter. You know, typically your musical biopic is like Walk the Line, which is about Johnny Cash. Or now they Ray. have an Elton John one coming The out, Elton John like one. Now, granted, that one looks pretty psychedelic. It does, yeah. But even that isn't quite as extreme as Mayhem. You know, I think the most, the heaviest, as far as what the band is about, movie that we've seen in the biopic realm, is probably Bohemian Rhapsody. You know? Just because of the, the content and the kind of band that Queen was. But I wouldn't call them extreme. 
you know? And I also personally wouldn't call Bohemian Rhapsody a particularly good movie. And I was just worried that, um, at first, that they just wouldn't be able to handle this. And uh, do you know the guy who made this by chance, Anna? No. I did a little research on this guy. His name is Jonas Ackerland. Um, he's direct. He's made a name for himself in the world of music videos. He directed Ray of Light for Madonna, which won the 1999 Grammy Award for Best Short-Term Music Video. Holy He's also the director of the infamous Pussy video by Rammstein. The God. video that's so sexually explicit, you currently have to view it on Pornhub if you want to watch it. <laughs> He's also directed music videos for Ozzy Osbourne, Paul McCartney, Satyricon, Lenny Kravitz, Christina Aguilera... Uh, he's also done some Metallica videos, one of which actually stars the cast of Lords of Chaos, the video for Man Unkind from Metallica's last album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. And he, I mean, he's done a lot. He's also directed some other movies, a recent movie called Polar. It's on Netflix right now. I personally have not seen it, but I've heard some decent things, as well as some concert movies from Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Jay-Z. This is a guy who knows his shit. And on top of all that, he's also the former drummer for Bathory. Oh, yeah. You were yeah. telling me this. He's, he kind of knows his shit. Uh, granted, he wasn't in Bathory for very long, just in the very early years. Yeah. But, you know. And if that wasn't enough to convince you that this guy is seriously fucking metal, despite all the pop shit listed there, can you guess what his first music video was? Take a wild guess. You all bewitched! Bewitched! Yeah, fucking bewitched. Candlemass. Oh, so th great. this is a guy That's who knows awesome. his shit. And right off the bat, I feel like his influence from music videos is so evident through this whole movie. Because it's, it's a beautifully shot film. It is. Like that's something a lot that, of great cinematography in the movie. It, that's what stands out to me the most. Like you can see why this guy is picked up by so many musicians over the years, within and outside heavy metal. He's got a great eye for great visuals. Some of the film's most provocative imagery, it just it it lingers in the mind just because of how he shoots it. Like when when we get to the part in the movie when you know they start burning churches and fucking killing people, it's done with a lot of intensity a lot of great close-up shots a lot of wide shots highlighting all the destruction the the carnage the rampaging and you get close-ups of all the actors faces and they're you know that's another thing the actors are really great in this too i really like the actor for Yonimus. he's great he that's really um good. rory culkin i think his name is i'm reading it here i do know that's one of the culkin brothers we were talking about that as yeah, we left the theater which is really cool <laughs> That's Can cool. you imagine if it was... I almost thought it was Macaulay Culkin at first. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking kid from Home Alone. <laughs> Who would win in a fight? The kid from Home Alone or Mayhem? Oh my god. <laughs> Wasn't there like a thing where it's like the Predator versus the fucking... Home yes, home? this is... We're getting off topic, but since you brought it up, there is an actual debate as to whether or not the Predator would win in a fight against Kevin from Home Alone. <laughs> it's It's pretty amazing. Um, but, I mean, uh, going back, uh, Jonas directs all of this really well. And, um, the actors are really great. Uh, the Rory Culkin... The scenes are really good. Nothing looks stupid at all. Looks no, really nothing. Good. None of it looks, like, really ridiculously fake. And, um, as far as I can tell, as far as the actual content of the plot goes, they seem to follow the history of Mayhem pretty closely. In fact, it actually cleared a couple of things up for me personally, because I was telling you on the way back over here from the theater that the timeline of who joined Mayhem and when was always a little rocky to me, mm -hmm. because I'm not the most familiar with Norwegian black metal, or for that matter, black metal at all. My realm has always been like thrash and 80s metal. Like, I've, I've always known that Mecro Butcher was an original member, but I was always confused as to why he wasn't on the debut album and how he rejoined the band. Mm -hmm. But now I actually got to see him with Necro with Mayhem literally in a fucking garage in a basement playing fucking tremolo riffs and super fast punk covers and stuff. That was cool. Um, the one thing that stands out to me as far as Mayhem's actual portrayal is that at first they kind of portray them more like, I would say, Guns N' Roses. <laughs> because these guys are partying and they're fucking girls left and right. And, and I don't know, that... Just just from how Mayhem have presented themselves and talked in the past, that seems a little off for me. But it's the 80s, yeah. and they were listening to, like, fucking Dio. God, they were young and whatever, and being stupid. Yeah. So I, don't, I, don't... I don't find that super hard to believe, yeah. but at the same time, it was kind of like, 
Huh, never took Mayhem for the partying type. Although that being said, Mayhem does like fucking beer festivals and shit nowadays, so. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Um, I'm trying to think of the, the, the one thing that also concerned me going into this movie was the portrayal of Varg of Occurrence. One of the most infamous, if not the most infamous figure in heavy metal. In music, for that matter. Mm -hmm. There, I mean, look, R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, shit. None of them have committed terrorism. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's let's get real here. Um. And uh, Varg Vakerns has been very open about his hatred for this movie, which is a good sign, in my opinion. Yeah. And uh, side distraction: the actor who plays him is Jewish, which is the greatest fucking thing ever. That's awesome. His name is Emery. Emery Cohen, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. He was in a film called Brooklyn. A, he was in another film called After School. I don't personally recognize him from anything. But I fucking liked him. Honestly, yeah. And I'm really glad that they didn't glorify Varg. They made him... Like, I honestly didn't know that the murder with you or not, Euronymous, was that, that fucking intense. Sorry, that's my alarm. Anna's gotta take her drugs. Because we're so fucking black metal over here. But we're so fucking metal. <laughs> Time to do didn't... drugs and snort cocaine off people's asses and shit. <laughs> I'm glad that they didn't fucking glorify him. And there's, like, yeah, once again, I didn't know that the murder was that bad. I remember that there was um, kind of a uh, documentary that was released by Fenris about the black metal scene in, Nor in, in Norway early on. And um, they did interview Varg, um, and he was talking about the murder, and he was just so casual about talking about how he killed Euronymous. It was really weird. And then actually seeing the interpretation, it was, like, fucking insane. It, I mean, everything he... Er, when you see everything, like, they do a little jokes and shit at first. Like, there's this little quip in the beginning where Varg, I don't eat meat, and Euronymous says, ha, ah, just like Hitler, and... Varg kind of has this, like, really happy smile. Yeah. And it's like, ha, ha, ha. And then you have to, like, as the movie goes on and you see him acting out on those hateful tendencies, and it's like, oh, shit. Like, as much as we make memes about him and all that, it yeah. really does highlight what a fucking maniac he is. I mean, he... Even, like, even the way... And, the, and for like... that matter, how he inspired other people to do fucking nonsense. Like The way that the actor talks is pretty close to how Varg... Talks, especially like if you watch his YouTube videos and stuff like that. Oh God, he has yeah. This air about him. It's going just, going on about fucking yeah. Odin and you know this is our land and He's whatever. Fucking stupid in the head, honestly. I'd <laughs> he be has this air about himself. And oh, absolutely. The way he talks, he thinks he's like a fucking genius. Oh, Varg Vakurans absolutely thinks he's the smartest fucking man in the world. I, he pro In his mind, he could probably win a debate against, like, Stephen fucking Hawking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and something that this movie does as well, it does two things great as far as the portrayal. One, in its darkest moments, it makes him look like a fucking horror movie villain. Like, on par with Hannibal Lecter. And in other moments, it very wisely takes kind of a Mel Brooks approach to Varg. And whenever they can show him as just being kind of incompetent and foolish and pretentious, they take advantage of it and they make a joke out of it. I which, like that, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it reminds me, as well, not just the Mel Brooks stuff, but also what Spike Lee did in Black Klansman last year, where Black Klansman interprets some of the dumbest members of the KKK literally just like, <laughs> I'm a fucking uh, for black people, uh, and they just look stupid, and they are stupid, and I'm really happy they did that with Varg I'm, here. I'm glad because you know some people who commit murders and crimes, you know, I mean, especially looking at Varg, he was young when he committed all this, so he wasn't like the smartest and the most keen too. He just wanted to fit in and act tough. Oh yeah. So, like, they really exploited him, making him look like an idiot when they did. <laughs> oh yeah and that was really interesting too is is playing on the dynamic between uh Euronymous and varg and how at the end of it all they were kind of just trying to one-up each other yeah like burzum had a record so Euronymous had to get his shit together and make a fucking mayhem record and you know uh, uh fucking varg had to fucking inspire someone to kill a guy and he burned a church so fucking Euronymous went in there and was like i'm gonna burn a fucking church too yeah and at first he's super into it, but like later on in the movie, I think it starts to hit him more and more what's happening, uh, as as well as he starts to see visions of like dead again, and that's really haunting to him. And I like that dynamic. It's that's where the film kind of goes into psychological horror. And 
Speaking of which, we haven't even talked about fucking dead. I know, because he he wasn't in there for long, for obvious reasons, because he fucking died. No. But um, I do like figuring out. I like I like how they portray him and how they found him and the things he did. But there's one scene with uh, dead that kind of icked me. It was weirdly acted and scripted. It felt like something manufactured for the trailer, which is not a coincidence because it was in the trailer. It was that scene where they're in the forest and yeah. he just goes, pull the trigger. Yeah, that. I, and yeah. even behind us, there was an there was one guy behind us who very audibly went. <laughs> like yeah. you could hear him snorting and yeah. giggling. Other than that, though, I do like the portrayal of dead. They really they show just how fucked in the head he was. They show him cutting himself on stage. They show him, you know, digging his fucking clothes and tempting other people to kill him and all the again, going back to the parties as well. And the scene where he finally does it, where he actually does kill himself, in my opinion, was probably one of the most powerful scenes in the movie. Uh, there's this moment where when he when he slits his wrists and he cuts his neck, he has this look on his face like this is almost orgasmic to him. Yeah, like, like he, he likes being close to death. Like, mm -hmm. He likes that feeling. So I think that's what they showed, because after he cut his wrists on stage, I think they showed like he was starting to like understand how it felt to be dying and he started to really enjoy that so like, he just went for it and just killed himself they do kind of cram pack everything about dead in about 20 minutes which does lead to one of my main problems of the movie instead of focusing on a specific time period it kind of tries to it kind of tries to cram about eight years worth of music into one movie and the problem with that is that you don't get enough time to develop any individual element now, granted, most of the other stuff works out pretty fine, but the first 20 minutes suffers because of this. Because in the first 20 minutes, it's established that Mayhem is a band. This is the lineup. Okay, the lineup changed. We moved to a studio. Dead is our, in our band. This happened. They don't elaborate on how they created their sound, which, frankly, is a, a, a big moment in any biopic where an artist discovers their sound. Like seeing Ray Charles touch his piano for the first time in Ray. Well, they were ha they did have that part where Bard was like, "I don't want anything in here except for one microphone." That's true, but that's in regards to Burzum. Yeah. But not not the black metal scene as a whole. Now, to be fair, the actual musical development of black metal itself is not a very interesting story, but it's something that they could have expanded upon a little bit, considering that this is by no means a well-known genre, and you know. Look, the, it doesn't matter who this audience is made for, it's being released in theaters. Yeah. So it might do them some good to explain for the one, I don't know, the one girlfriend that got dragged in with her boyfriend or mm -hmm. something. Or the one couple that tried to see Aquaman and it was like, well, this, is, this isn't this is sold out. Why don't we check this out? Those or... two old guys in the theater. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> we, were, we, we were in this theater. Uh, there's only two theaters in the GTA screening this fucking movie right now. And behind us, there were like two guys. They looked like not only had they never heard of Mayhem in their life, if I had to guess, their knowledge of heavy metal is like ACDC and Metallica, and that's it. Yeah, they listened to it once in high school. That's yeah, it. <laughs> they 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 just looked like dads. And there was like there was like some sex scenes in the movie, whatever, and like it's just awkward because it's like you're watching a sex scene with your dad, like oh yeah, in the fucking theater. <laughs> it was it was kind of weird. That's just creepy. It was is was it weird to you that they portrayed Varg as like this total fucking like man whore who was yeah. just gonna like fuck anything that moved? It, it was weird because I've never seen him explain that way ever once. Because I mean, they they even make him seem like like he's about to do something to these girls if they don't listen to him. Because there's this one scene early on when they're in their fucking black circle dungeon area, yeah. and. Euronymous, I mean, he's kind of a sleaze guy. He, he's kind of a sleaze ball, but he's not like an asshole. It's more like, I'm an 80s metalhead and I like beer and boobs, you yeah. know? And he's like having fun with this girl. And then Varg is just like, take off your fucking shirt. Are you deaf? Like he turns into fucking John Malkovich for a moment <laughs> and just gets really stern and really tough. Yeah, I've never heard him being portrayed that way. I've never heard that part of Varg. No, I mean I'm not shocked. Yeah. I mean, He's a racist stupid, so terrorist may yeah. as well add sexist to the list. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> honestly. Fuck him. Uh, I think I, I got off track a little bit. Um, but yeah, going going back to those first thirty minutes, it just felt like there was a lot cram packed into one scene, and it didn't help that there was narration. Like this was somehow like a, a mockumentary for a bit. I feel like 
the little, like, at the beginning it was fine, but adding it in little bits and pieces there was kind of annoying. I'd for, rather it just not be narrated. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I guess since some of you might not have seen this, Rory Culkin, as Euronymous does voiceover throughout the movie, narrating some parts, and it goes back to a very basic element of filmmaking show don't tell i don't need him to tell me how black metal evolve i'd rather you just show me in in my opinion you probably could have cut out those entire first 20 minutes you probably could have started the movie when mayhem does their first concert and just gone from there in that's in my point. opinion that's a good point um but, yeah I, I don't mind the first part of narrating whatever but just the little parts in the movie, it just kind of breaks it up. It doesn't ruin it for me, but it is something where, like, if I was in the editing room and I'm sitting there like, okay, this movie's two hours long, how do we shave 20 minutes off of it? It could have, it could have been worse. It could have I narrated everything and just dumbed it down. Oh, God, yeah. So it was it was okay. It wasn't a deal breaker or anything. It, it wasn't, but I will say that sitting there in the theater at first, because you see the Vice Films logo and I'm sitting there, listening to Rory Culkin go, my name's Euronymous, and I'm in a black metal band. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, this feels like a fucking Vice video right now. Yeah. And I started, like, in my head, I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm going to have to agree with these fucking black metal losers, but this is kind of a bit much right now. Again, thankfully, it gets a lot better once Mayhem does their first concert. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes is when Euronymous points to uh, Varg's jacket, and he's because he has the scorpions patch. He's like scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> he just walks away yeah, from that's him. that's actually a great moment. I like how this movie actually kind of explores just the mentality of black metal. Just like you're either black metal or you're not. If you listen to, to Metallica, if you listen to Motley Crue, you're not black metal. It's that simple. And in that same dungeon scene that I mentioned earlier, one of the girls goes, "Well, you know, Venom said it was just a joke and they get really upset and defensive about it. Like, yeah. well, for them, it's an image. For us, this is real. Yeah. And, like... There are still people like that. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that they were saying and doing that I, I had to kind of sit there and go, I feel like I've met people who have said exactly this. Yeah. And there's even when, when uh, Euronymous opens his record store and he walks in, it's like, why are you selling fucking scorpions, man? It's like... Because we, we don't. We sell real metal here. Well, where's the real metal? It's like, oh, you got to find it. Only posers buy scorpions. And it's like, okay, first off, it's a record store. Fuck your fucking elitist mentality, okay? You don't get to sit here and talk about true metal when you're selling Dr. Feelgood. Did you notice that? <laughs> no, I didn't. That stood out like a sore thumb to me. Not the Scorpions record, but there's playing, look, Metallica and that shit, that's one thing. Metallica was still kind of underground. But on one of the record shelves in his shop, he's selling, like, Dr. Feelgood by Motley Crue, the quintessential pop metal album of the 80s. <laughs> So fuck you and your elitist mentality. You're selling fucking Kickstart My Heart, man. I mean, to be fair... Which is not a diss on Dumb Motley Crue. I'm actually a huge fan. To be fair, if you want to make money but, in a record you know, store, you're going to have to sell some popular things. I know, but uh, I get that. And it's not a complaint with the film, but to me it's like, this really kind of dissects just how bullshit the elitist mentality yeah. is. And you, you can see how like it goes from being, well, I like black metal, to... You either, you ride or die for black metal. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I would die for black metal. I, I won't snitch on black metal. Because, like, these, these guys start killing people and they literally make, like, a fucking pact to, yeah. you know, not kill people. And I don't know, God, what was his name? Um, the big tall guy that ended up, um, he, uh, he ended up killing the, the gay dude in the forest. I don't remember. Was that Faust or was that Hellhammer? I don't know. <laughs> God, I'm like I'm like struggling. Oh no, I'm the worst with names. Well, they spend most, of, and that's another thing. They spend so much time on some of the other on Euronymous and Varg, and in the beginning, dead. That I feel like some of the other guys also get forgotten. And yeah. now, to be fair, it's not really about them. It's it's built from the ground up. You know, it's clear from the beginning this is going to be about Euronymous, and then eventually about you know Varg and Euronymous. Um, but yeah, it, it is something I noticed. I'm just trying to find the name of the fucking guy. While you're talking about that, we've never actually seen an interview of the actual Euronymous talk. Like, have we ever had an interview or anything? We have it some was footage Faust. of him. My apologies. It was Faust. Um, he ends up killing... Was Faust gay? And Is Faust gay? 
Do you know that know by him? chance? I think he just used it as a setup to lure someone out to a uh, forest and kill someone. I mean, that wouldn't shock me, frankly. Uh, but it is something I thought was interesting. Oh, fuck, this guy ended up playing for Emperor, I think. Huh, well, would you look at that? Yeah, he ended up playing for Emperor on their first few albums. Well then! <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. We've never, like... Have we, we've never... I don't know if there's any videos about, like, Euronymous... The actual Euronymous talking about anything, because I feel like we're just going on memories of Euronymous, because we've never... We don't know anything that... We don't know that much about the real Euronymous besides what people have said about him. No, we don't. So that's what's kind of hard about it, because it's like... I don't... Because I don't... I don't know if I'm sold if Euronymous is a good or bad guy. He's kind of not. He's just kind of like... A, he's kind of a dick. I don't think he's a really great guy. I mean, he, he did egg on um, Dead to Kill Himself. I know that. So it's like... The they kind of gloss over that, yeah, come to think I mean, of it. Yeah, because they do. I mean, they, they kind of treat him as a good guy who's trying to like redeem himself at the end. But I don't really convince... I'm not really convinced that Euronymous is a really good guy. No. Um... I think that was more so done just because the movie needed a hero. Yeah. You know what I mean? It needed not necessarily a relatable figure. It just needed someone who wasn't a fucking asswad. Yeah. Which, I guess compared to the rest of the people in Mayhem, he is kind of, you know, the hero. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, that's actually a good point. Yeah, <laughs> like, I got nothing else to add to we that. We just have a character, Euronymous, an idea of him. But I mean, that's not the worst thing. It's just... Because it could have been like, oh, because they could have done it in a way where it's just like, Euronymous is good and Bark is bad. But they do show that Euronymous is being a dick. He wants things his way. You know, he told people to kill him, to kill themselves. He, he strikes me not even as a villain, but more so just as, like, the visionary who just takes it too far. And then by the time it's gone too far, it's too late. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's... I don't want to use this word, especially considering it's black metal, but he is kind of like the prophet for black metal. You know, like he, he, this is his vision. This is his goal. And then he got stuck in the middle of all of it when shit hit the fan. And that's not to excuse anything he did that was truly terrible. But again, compared to the, you know, compared to the actual convicted terrorist. Yeah. You know, if Bart really <laughs> did kinda... want it, yeah. If Bart took it to the next level. And, and again, those scenes are so fucking powerful. And it, it does a pretty good job of getting into Varg's mindset. Like, when we see the Nazi flags for the first time, it's actually quite striking. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I had something to say and I blanked. I don't know. The whole death It's the scene beer. Was... I haven't eaten and I'm drinking beer. I, I really like the scene where um, he does kill Euronymous. We were talking before we left the theater... <laughs> about uh, other people who were in the scene at the time. Uh, Fenris from Dark Throne, for instance. As well as um, Attila, the current singer for Mayhem, who was briefly represented in the movie. But they're given very limited roles. Now, granted, that's because the movie's about Mayhem. But that did strike me as odd, be as based on something you said. This is about the rise of Norwegian black metal, and we're missing a couple key figures. This, you know, it is advertised as a biopic for Mayhem, and... Yeah, technically that is what it is, but it's also supposed to be about Norwegian black metal. I mean, yeah, we saw, like, a Dark Throne shirt and whatever, but, you know, what about, like, Immortal? Oh, yeah, fuck Immortal, <laughs> come to think of it. <laughs> Our, you know, there's a whole bunch of bands that, I don't know. It could just be boiled down to these people did not want to be represented in the movie. Because it's it's... Uh, it's already widely known that Mayhem are not fans of this movie. Which, by the way... I think that's the hottest bullshit ever. Attila, in the movie, is portrayed by his real-life son, and Mayhem still approved to have all their music in the movie. They still approved to have this made. So I don't buy the argument that Mayhem is like, this is a fucking bullshit, whatever. Even Varg Vakern's. Like, Varg Vakern still had to sign some kind of paper to sign over his life rights. Yeah, that's true. Like, I don't buy the argument that they're all sitting around a table going, well, maybe... fucking mainstream posers, <laughs> fucking Imagine Dragons, fucking... He directed a Madonna video, he's gonna make a fucking black metal movie. I don't remember where I was going with that. I don't know either, but... Yeah. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't eaten anything and this beer's hitting me a little hard. Are you hungry? I am a little hungry. It's almost 10 o'clock. It is almost 10 o'clock. I'll be fine. I'll make something after this. Okay. Um, I don't know. I feel like we've talked about everything that needs to be said about this movie. Yeah. 
Um, I I just overall I guess to close it off, it was much like Mayhem, very provocative, very interesting, and I couldn't look away even in, in its most disgusting and uncomfortable moments. Also, much like the real life Mayhem, there are things I would change, but I did still enjoy it. I feel like regardless of whatever your stance is on black metal and mayhem, I feel like you should see it because it is, regardless, whatever the fuck you think, it is a part of heavy metal history. It is a part of music history. It's something that should be seen. Out of five, what would you give it? I'd give it a three. A three? Yeah. I'm feeling a 3.5 at that I'd point. Give it a three. Leaning towards a four because the stuff I like, I really fucking like. But I can't ignore some of the weird line reads. I can't ignore... Um, just how they gloss over some things here yeah. and there. And I also can't ignore those first 20 minutes, man. That was a bit of a challenge, I'll be fully honest with you. I'd probably watch it again. I probably would, but I would maybe skip to when Mayhem starts their first concert. Yeah. Oh, if I may, the one other thing that did kind of bug me, as visually interesting as it was, it did still bug me a little bit that at some points, Jonas just went full music video. Like when Euronymous has this one dream sequence um in the middle of the movie and it feels like something from a rob zombie video yeah like it's just oh, there's a lot of wild and frantic shots and it's interesting and it's cool to look at but it doesn't have a lot to do with what's actually happening and same thing with it mayhem's first concert where they literally do just kind of do a fucking music video although in defense of that scene it does sh again show just how fucked up dead was because that is where you see the pig's head, and he's he's wearing the fucking clothes. He's slicing his arms up on stage. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I oh, overall, this movie is far from the cringe fest that I think a lot of people are yeah, expecting no, this I've to seen be. Worse, I've seen worse. Well, we've definitely seen worse. <laughs> you and I have definitely seen worse. Um, I'm I'm curious what people are gonna think after this movie because I know people going into this movie. M frankly are going to have their minds made up the black metal community is not known for being particularly open-minded i would encourage you in that case i would say still watch it because like you said i think it's kind of an event thing yeah. you know it's it's like our super bowl this is like a big moment where black metal is getting some kind of international stage to explain itself and show itself to the world and i think you should watch it for that reason that being said if you're like a casual viewer i wouldn't say go out of your way because a, I don't feel like I feel like a lot of normal people are just gonna sit there in the theater and go, "This is weird and spooky." A lot of it's gonna go over their head because mm -hmm. they don't understand the impact of this. And then there's the practical aspect of it's playing in literally like seven fucking theaters yeah. <laughs> on the fucking planet. Yeah. Um, like like I said, even here in the GTA, it's only playing in two theaters. It is available on most streaming services, from what I understand. Like you can get it digitally if you want oh. to do that. I don't know. Yeah. Have a movie night. Have a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have a, yeah get, get some popcorn and fucking watch Lords of Chaos, you know? It would be kind of a cool movie for that, though. Like, turn down the lights, you know? Because it's not a horror movie, but it does have a lot of horror elements. So I then guess you if you're watch, looking for something a little spicy on date night. Then you can watch Fubar and Fubar 2. What the fuck? I haven't showed you Fubar, remember? It was like a fucking parody about some Canadian fucking metalheads. Oh, stupid. yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, you said it Anvil was in that movie, yeah? No, just one of the characters has like an Anvil shirt. And that's Okay. Yeah. I could have sworn you said something about it. That must be it. He has like a fucking belly shirt that says Anvil on it. It's great. <laughs> it's honestly a fucking weird movie and I love it. I think the second one's a lot better though. But it's great. Yeah, I gotta show you Fubar. I think we gotta watch Fubar. Yeah. Maybe that'll be the next movie. No, it won't. I don't know. I, I think that's it. I don't think we got anything else to say here really. There was something I was thinking, um, well, yeah, but I think this is important to know for somebody who does like black metal, is that this literally was built on death, murder, and destruction. And that, fuck Varg, fuck Nazis, yeah, fuck all that shit. In, in the immortal words of uh, Barney Greenway, Nazi punks fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's probably the most interesting about it, is I feel like it exposes a lot of the nonsense about elitist metal heads and don't shit don't get me wrong it's fucking cool that black metal is built on church burning but i don't want this i don't like the glorification of varg i don't like the glorification of dead because i know that there are some people who are obsessed with him mm -hmm. 
So that's shit I don't like. And I think this movie does a really good job at showing you what's important, showing you what happened without glorifying any of it. Even the dead scene, I feel, is done really respectfully. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I with that in mind, if you're one of those super conservative fucking black metal losers, you fucking much hell. like much like the characters in this movie, you live with mom and and what you know, you can't actually talk to someone in real life about being an asshole, all that shit. I, true Norwegian black metal. What the fuck is this Mirkur shit? If you're one of those people, j- just fuck right off. Don't see exactly. this movie. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your money. No one wants to hear you. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'll speak okay. directly to you. Just fuck off. Although I will, I'll give black metal fans this. It is a little bit of a kick in the dick that in the credits there's a Mirkur song. <laughs> Oh, well, fuck them. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying don't fuck them. It's a fucking great song. They played a Soul Stiffier song in there. They did. And... But, but it was like, holy shit, we're just gonna go out of our way at this point to piss off the black metal fans. That, that had to have been done knowingly. Cause Probably. It was, it, it was fucking incredible. Probably. So, yeah, uh, one three out of five, one three point five out of five, do you have anything else to say? Um, I don't know. Fuck Varg. Yeah, fuck Varg. Okay, go yeah. go see Lords of Chaos. It's not the cringe fest that so many people think it is. It definitely has issues, but it does a great job of telling the story. It's a visually super interesting movie. It honestly looks... You know what? I want to fucking visit Norway because it looks fucking beautiful. Yeah, like, those, it makes me want to visit Norway. Shots, holy shit. Yeah, even just vic it out. I mean, black metal is such an inherently visual genre, and Jonas Eckerland is obviously a very visual director from his previous works. And the two combine together so wonderfully. As, just as far as cinematography goes and direction, this is a great film. And I would argue, out of his narrative-driven ones, his best. Who knows? Maybe the Taylor Swift concert movie is a better film. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Who knows, eh? But yeah, that that's it. Lords of Chaos. It's not fucking garbage. Yeah. It's that's... actually really good. Yeah. I feel like we're just going on at this point. Yeah, maybe we are. That's okay. That's okay. So that's it, I guess. Thank you for joining Metal Meltdown on our first ever movie review. Maybe not the last, because Motley Crue has a biopic next month on Netflix, and I'm personally very curious about that. Uh, Maybe we'll get a scene where Nikki Six is trying to sell some fucking Burzum records or something. (laughs) (laughs) And that's it. Uh, Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to hear next. Blah, blah, blah. Metal Meltdown has a Facebook page. There's like 20 of you on there. and right, Wait, what the fuck? I, I know have, I have hundreds of people watch these videos and there's 20 of you following me on Facebook. Where the fuck are you guys? I have a store. You can buy my shit. That's correct. Heart stuff. of Diana has a store. I have a really cool um, curio dome with a bird food in it. It's actually really cool. You Sounds pretty spooky. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I, I brought use, her on. I use real bones. This is why I brought way. her on because no one knows spooky shit quite like the Heart of <laughs> Diana. So, so uh, I'll make sure to put a link for that in the description. And you guys have yourselves a fantastic fucking day.